Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at my 2022 Kia EV6 long range all wheel drive GT line package 2. Price tag 64,345 Canadian dollars. That includes $2,000 in freight, $250 for this gorgeous runway red paint and $100 in excise tax plus sales tax and minus any government rebates. Before any rebates, this car in Ontario at 13% sales tax cost just under $73,000 Canadian. Here's the remote. Press and hold to turn the car on. Park forwards, park backwards. Lock, unlock, press and hold to open the trunk. You have to press and hold in order to open the trunk. And if you release it, it will stop midway so if you want it to open all the way you have to press and hold until it opens all the way press and hold to sound the alarm press this and then you can release the actual key from the fob now the party trick lock the car even though it's already locked press and hold the top button to turn the car on you see the lights now park forwards Now, park backwards. Tesla pioneered this feature called Summon in the Tesla many years ago, and then it showed up in the BMW 7 Series. Needless to say, cars well over $100,000. And now we have it in a Kia EV6. The camera makes the LED daytime running lights look sequential, but they're not, they're static. We're looking at the digital tiger nose because it's an EV, so it doesn't need that huge grill. Down below, we see another grill, and these flaps actually open when you start driving the car. Take a look. Car is wearing this new Kia badge, K, I, and A. But every time I take a look, it looks like an inverted N to me. <laughs> Still much better, much, much better than the old badge. 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque available instantly at zero RPM because it's an electric car coming from two electric motors, one at the front, one at the back, making it an all-wheel drive vehicle and a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. A more powerful 577 horsepower EV6 GT will be coming later this year. But for now, this is the range topping GT line package two that comes with 20 inch wheels or rims wrapped in Continental Cross Contact RX tires, size 255-45 R20, which is very wide for an EV, which tells you that Kia really focused on performance along with efficiency. Looking at the side profile, yes, Kia is calling it a crossover, and it does look like a lifted hatchback, but technically a crossover or CUV is actually a cross between a car and an SUV and essentially that's what you're getting here. I love this design element where the tail lights connect with this black trim. It reminds me of the previous generation Lexus IS. I loved it on that car and I love it on here. The only thing I wish Kia did was painted the roof black to match with the rest of the gloss black trim up top and that would have been just perfect would have given this car a very very mean look I mean it still looks very mean and sexy but that would have taken it to the next level I mean I can get it wrapped but factory paint would have been nice here's your charging lid which can be opened from a button inside or by firmly pushing here if you push it gently it's not gonna open your charging indicator 0 to 24 percent 25 to 49 percent 50 to 74 percent and 75 to 100 percent this is to close the lid this is to override any charging schedule so let's say you have the car uh, 
configured to charge only after seven o'clock at home because that's when electricity is cheaper but you go out and there's free charging and you plug the car in it's not going to charge because there's a schedule set so you press this button to overwrite that schedule and the car will start charging i think a better way is to leave the car alone and if you have a level 2 evse at home configure and if it's smart configure the schedule in the EVSC instead of the car. So you don't have to do this every time because sometimes you can forget unless you, you plug it in and you walk away and you forget to do this. Now you come back after a few hours and the car is not charged. I know the car makes a sound saying started charging but it doesn't happen until after a few seconds. What if you're only already gone by then? Use this port for level one and level two charging. For DC fast charging, take this out and now you have this combo connector that you can use for level 3 charging if you have access to 350 kilowatt chargers it can go from 10 to 80 percent in 18 minutes at 50 kilowatts that will take 73 minutes level 1 charging will take almost three days 68 hours and level two with a 48 amp will take seven hours and 10 minutes. Now, the Kia manual doesn't say if it's zero to 100% or 10 to 100%. And as you can see, because I didn't plug anything, the lid automatically closed. Speaking of automatically closed, we have a power tailgate. There is a switch to the right of the camera that you can push to open the tailgate. As you can see, the tailgate opened pretty quickly. There is a setting within the infotainment system that you can use to configure how quickly you want it to open. There are two settings, fast and normal. Within that setting, there is also another option where you can configure how high you want it to open. Currently, it's at full setting and you can push this button to close the tailgate. You can configure the height here too, manually, but why not just do it from the infotainment system when you're setting up the car. The car also has hands-free power tailgate access. For it, it has to be locked and turned off, which I did. You walk up to the car, close enough, the car will beep and flash the tail lights five times and then open the trunk. If you are not close enough, this will not happen. Your level one EVSE is in here. That's right, it's an EVSE, not a charger. The charger is actually on board the vehicle. This is just an EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment. The purpose is to supply and maintain the appropriate amount of electricity going to the vehicle. And if you're wondering where the V2L adapter is, you can't see it, you can't find it. You were promised you would get with the car, at least the GT Line package too. It's right here in this pouch. What I love about the design of this pouch is that it has Velcro at the bottom. So it doesn't keep flying around in the trunk when you're driving. And you have access to this large trunk, which is more than enough for whatever you would need to do on a daily basis, unless you are hauling large items. And which expands even more when you fold the second row seats, which can easily be done by pulling this lever on either side making the task very easy and as you can see now the cargo space is massive when the seats are folded they actually get locked into place and you can use this lever to release otherwise as you can see I'm pulling the seat and can't release it the door has a very large opening good for accessibility aluminum door handles your Meridian sound system Rear seats are heated, as you can see, two levels, powered windows at the back. They're not one touch. You have to press and hold to open and close. As you can see, the seats are up and the rear seats recline. How much? I have reclined this seat to show you the difference. The other seat is not reclined, so you can see how much the seats recline. Flat floor. Seat pockets at the back on both sides. Very smartly placed AC vents for the passengers at the back, which can be opened and closed from here and blows air directly to the passenger as opposed to putting them where it has been done for decades and decades behind the center console.
You have two USB-C ports right here, which are super fast charging. That's right. When I plugged in my Android phone on the screen, it said super fast charging, not just fast charging, which is super cool. The interior V2L outlet is located right across from the center console below the rear seats and is locked for safety, but can be unlocked using the key embedded in the fob from here. Reading lights at the back are not touch sensitive like the front ones. So you actually have to use this button to turn them on and off. Since we're back here, let's see what the ambient lighting looks like at night. So this is eco in green. Normal is blue. And then sport is pink. And if you press and hold for snow, it turns white. The wing tipped mirrors unfolded, the driver door unlocked. As you can see, the passenger doors did not unlock. Now, if you access the car through the passenger door, all the doors will unlock. Take a look. So if you are a gentleman opening the door for your partner, the car knows that you have to get on the other side so you don't have to unlock the door. Or that also means that if you're opening the passenger side, it means you're not alone. So it unlocks all the doors for you. See, all doors unlocked if you access the car from the passenger side. The other way is to double press the unlock button on the key fob. Now, if this was night, you would be able to see that there is a welcome light that comes uh, down from the, uh, from the spoiler. And it's actually pretty bright. Take a look. It's pretty impressive actually if you see it illuminates the ground almost the entire length of the car open the door for this very large door opening a great feature for accessibility the two-tone door trims soft touch materials aluminum door handles memory seat one memory seat two this button right here up top can be used to fold and unfold the side view mirrors left or right to configure and position your side door mirrors. I always keep it to either right or left. Doesn't matter where you do. When you put the car in reverse, both the side view mirrors will tilt down. If it's in the center, then they won't. Lock the doors, all doors. Unlock all the doors. One touch power windows for the driver and the passenger. The rear ones are not one touch, but they are powered. Rear safety lock for the windows and the doors. If it's activated, the people in the back cannot open the doors or roll the windows down. A small cubby here. A small cubby here. In my previous car, the Outlander PHEV, it was flat and very large. Large enough for me to put uh, a full-size uh, sanitizer with a pump and a lotion. But I had to switch them out for smaller sanitizer and, and lotion because, like, it's tilted and it's not big enough. Not a big deal. Just something you need to know. The 14-speaker Meridian surround sound system. I'm going to hold my judgment to it because there is a software update for it, which apparently improves the sound quality by a lot. This is your hood release lever. Hydraulics, which is great, so there's no rod for you to stick somewhere. A very small frunk, because this is uh, an all-wheel drive model and has a motor at the front. So this is a very, very small frunk. Uh, the rear-wheel drive models actually get a bigger frunk. But I like the fact that it's hydraulic. 
power adjustable seats with lumbar support, not just for the driver, but also the passenger. The seats are made of vegan leather and suede. It looks and feels incredible. The seats are firm, but very comfortable. The headrest looks odd the way it's designed, but it is perfectly normal when you're sitting. It just looks odd, which reminds me, the back of the headrest actually doubles as your coat hanger right here on both sides. The flat bottom steering wheel, it's nice and thick. I'm not a fan of this design, but overall it's a very good quality, very nice steering wheel, very nice to hold. I love the feel of the flat bottom when you're turning the wheel. And it's heated all the way around, which is great. EV6 branded carpet mats that come with the car. All these interior buttons are backlit and look really nice at night. Brightness up and down for the dual 12.3 inch screens. Opening the charging port. Press and hold to open the tailgate. Electronic parking brake and disable the stability control, which obviously I do not recommend. Push button start, foot on the brake, turn the car on. The gauge cluster and the infotainment system comes alive. And you see that animated Kia logo in the head-up display, followed by a warning that says, check blind spots before changing lanes. Right above the push button start, ventilated seats for the driver, three levels. One, two, three. Heated seats, three levels. One, two, three. Heated steering wheel, only one setting. And then the same thing, three levels for the passenger, heated seats and the passenger ventilated seats. Right below the push button start is the gear shifter. Rotate to the left for reverse, to the right for drive and in the middle for neutral and then push to park. To enable and disable your parking sensors, your auto hold enable and disable. What that means is when you come to a complete stop, you don't have to keep your foot on the brake. The car will keep the brakes on for you. Uh, the way it's implemented in the EV6 is great though because every other car I've had, I had to turn it on every single time I got in the car. For the EV6, I only had to do it once. And that's it. Every time I get in, it's already enabled. The camera button, you press it once and your rear view camera comes up. You can zoom in and out using these buttons right here. Also, you have different views here and then this one. You can see a 3D rendering of this car and just with your finger slide it up and down, left or right, and see your surroundings. I have to tell you, for the car to be able to do this, render an image like this of the surroundings from the camera, it needs to have a very, very powerful chip which in this case I'm guessing it does because this is not an easy task to render an image like this in real time I'm not talking about the image of the car because obviously this is a, just a picture I'm talking about the images of the surroundings if you press and hold the camera button while the car is in park then you get these instructions the car, which is no different than what I already demonstrated in the beginning of the video Essentially, you get somewhere, it's a tight spot, then you get out of the car, and then you park the car using the key fob. But if you are actively looking for a parking spot, let's say in a mall, I'm going to put the car in drive for that, and then press and hold this camera button. As you can see, the car is scanning for parking spots on both sides and asking you to drive slowly and keep closer to the side on which you want to park, left or right. Once the car finds a parking spot, it will give you two options, whether to step out and use the key fob to park the car or to stay in but let the car take over. For that, I will make a detailed video showing you how to park parallel and perpendicular. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I drop that video. 15 watt Qi fast charging pad. When I put my phone on here, it says fast wireless charging. 
and an orange light comes up on here. When the phone is fully charged, it turns to green. Two cup holders, a small area for your change, and a small but very deep cubby in the center console. Down below, you'll see another storage area with an umbrella because Canada. <laughs> I use this mostly for takeout. This is another USB-C port. This is your cigarette lighter port. A USB-A port for using your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You're going to have to use this. USB-C is not going to work. This is another USB-C port. Push this button to open the glove box and a very deep glove box opens. And as you can see, I have microfiber cloth sitting there to clean the screens. Push and close. Driver side visor with the mirror, LED light, and a clip to put a paper or two here. It opens and extends. Same for the passenger side. Mirror, clip, LED light. Extends. LED cabin lights, which are touch sensitive. You can just touch the outer rim of the lights and they will turn on and off. Or you can just touch this button to temporarily turn them on and off. This button right here is on and off if you want the lights to come on and off when you open and close the door. To open your sunroof, you use this button. If you want to open just the sunshade and not the sunroof, just lightly push this button. And as you can see, only the sunshade will open. Push it once again, a bit hard, and the sunroof will open. Push it forward hard, and not only the sunroof will close, but also the sunshade. But if you just want to close the sunroof and not the sunshade, do the same thing. Lightly push it forward, and it will only close the sunroof and not the sunshade. If you push it up, it will open the sunshade and just tilt the sunroof up. Push it forward, and it will close the sunroof and the sunshade. No garage door opener integrated into this almost $73,000 vehicle. This is the curved panoramic display comprised of two 12.3 inch TFT screens that are not curved. And that's right. The screens themselves are not curved, but the frame is giving you the illusion of this large curved display, which I could care less because it works. You can swipe through this infotainment screen just like a tablet. This first screen gives you an overview of your battery charge, your range, the weather, and the media you were listening to. In this case, satellite radio. Swipe right to go into the second page. And then you see this font projection. I'm not going to go through all the menus because they're self-explanatory. But this font projection can be confusing. It's actually Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. When you plug your phone in, this will change to either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. User's Manual. QR code. You can actually scan your phone and it will take you to the web page where you can see the user's manual for this car. <sighs> HD radio data. As you can see, we're getting traffic data through HD radio. Doppler radar. This is for weather. You also have the option to go split screen. So for example, you are sitting in radio, which I love the way they've designed it. Very retro, very cool. So this is full screen right now, but at the edge here, you can tap this and now it's split screen and you can decide what you want to display here. You can go to a map or rather like I have it to the minimum right now, but you can actually configure it through the infotainment system. 
let me show you a trick. So you go back, let's say you are in the setup and trying to find a setting. And instead of going through each one of these options, you can just tap the search button and search for it. Let's say ambient lighting, for example. All I did was typed AMB and there you go. We have ambient lighting. I tap that. And as you can see, I have link to drive mode selected, which means every time I change the drive mode, the lighting will change. And you can try that with any other setting you're looking for. Super easy. This long range all wheel drive GT line package two is rated at 441 kilometers on a full charge. We are at 96%. And as you can see, we have 389 kilometers. This is also the same range that you see through your Kia Connect app and is only for the eco mode with all the creature comforts turned off. No air conditioning, no heated seats, no ventilated seats, no heated steering wheel, none of that. That's what it's rated at, 441. Apart from the weather and the driving conditions, even the drive mode will affect your range. Which brings me to the drive mode. At the bottom left of the steering wheel, we have the drive mode selector. Currently, we're in Eco, as you can see, 389 kilometers. When I tap it, it changes into normal. And as you can see, the range went down to 378 and also the layout changed. So with each drive mode, the layout changes. I tap it again and it went down to 366 in sport mode. And as you can see, the layout also changed for the sport mode. Press and hold for snow, and it actually went up to 389. Press it again, and then it went from snow back to sport. So it's not gonna cycle you back into eco. When you're in sport mode, it will take you back to the mode that you came from. So let's say you're in eco, and then you press and hold and go to snow. So when I press again, it's gonna take me back to eco. Same for normal and sport. The car always defaults to normal. So if that's how you like driving, you're good. You're also good if you drive in eco because the car will remember that and the next time you get in the car, it will be in eco. But if you drive in sport, the next time you get in the car, it will go back to normal. And then you just have to press it once and it will change the drive mode. The car also remembers the color of the ambient light of the last drive mode. So if you stopped driving in sport mode, when you get in the car next time, the ambient lighting will be pink until you press this button and start the car, at which point it will default back to normal and the lights will turn blue. Mounted behind the steering wheel on each side are paddle shifters that control the brake regeneration. Brake regeneration is when the car starts slowing down when you take your foot off the accelerator because of the magnetic resistance in the electric motors and not the brakes. As you can see, brake regeneration is at level zero right now, which is coasting. Now, if I use the left paddle shifter and pull it, it becomes level one, which is the least powerful brake regeneration. Pull it once again, two and three, and then the last one is level four, which is called max, and it will also enable eye pedal. Eye pedal or one pedal driving enables you to drive around town using the accelerator pedal only with the minimal to no use of brakes. Obviously, you will use the brakes in case of an emergency, but if you time your deceleration properly, you can come to a complete stop without using the brakes based on the brake regeneration alone. You can also use max or level four brake regeneration without enabling eye pedal. So let's say you are in level three. So instead of pulling the left paddle shifter once, you press and hold and it goes to max, which is level four, but iPedal will not be enabled. And when you release it, because I'm in a parking lot right now, it's still in max, but if I was driving, it would go back to level three. Now, if I use the right paddle shifter, it will go from three to two, to one, to zero, zero being coasting. Now, if I hold the right paddle shifter, it changes to auto. 
And you don't have to come to all the way down to zero to hold. You can hold it even at three and it will still turn to auto. What that means is now the car will automatically modulate the brake regeneration between level one and four, depending on the distance between you and the car ahead of you and the speed at which you are traveling. One important thing to remember about brake regeneration is that anything above level one, which means level two, three, and max, will actually turn the brake lights on. So it's not a good idea to use them on the highway. The left stock is used for controlling your lights as well as your turn signals. As you can see, it's currently set at auto and anything you do here will be displayed in the gauge cluster. So it's at the auto. So you essentially don't even have to look at the stock. You just pay attention to your gauge cluster. Now, when I turn it up, it goes to the daytime running lights and then another level up. And now the headlights are on, going down, down and down to off. So I'm gonna leave it to auto. If I turn it up now, the right turn signal is on. And as you can see, we're getting a live feed of the camera into the gauge cluster, essentially showing us the blind spots. Other cars have blind spot monitoring systems. We actually have a blind spot monitor into the gauge cluster. Same thing for the left. I used a left turn signal and now I have a live feed of the left side of the car showing me any blind spots. Kia and Hyundai are the only two companies doing this at any price. You cannot find any other car that does this. The stock to the right is used to control your wipers. You can set it to be the least or most sensitive. And as you can see, I have set it to most sensitive. So even a little bit of water on the screen will trigger the wipers. And this obviously you can have to uh, mist off auto low and then high and everything just like the other stock is displayed here so if i go up it goes off right now it's auto and then low and then high so i'm going to go back to auto and then to adjust how sensitive you want it as you can see the bars to the left are going down and i'm going to go put it up back to maximum the left side of the steering wheel is for your driver assistance features and also for your gauge cluster control. We have four pages that can be cycled through using this button right here. And then some pages might have sub menu items which can be scrolled through using this toggle switch. While browsing, you will see this white dot on the screen which tells you that there are additional items on this page. Now, after a while, as you can see, the dot disappears. But while you're scrolling, you will see the dot and you will know there's more information. In which case, I will use this toggle switch and see what it has to offer. And I see the attention level assist, which I never use. So I'll go back to this page, which, which is, is essentially used for your HDA information. Going to the next page, just hit this button. And it tells you the accumulated info since you have, at least since I've gotten the vehicle, what's my average uh, economy and for how many hours I've driven. And I scroll through and this resets every time you turn off the car. And then this is since I've charged, this is the distance I've traveled with that fuel economy and the time driven. And as you can see at the bottom, it says, Hold OK to reset. I'll show it to you again here. So this one cannot be reset. As you can see, it doesn't give you a reset option, but the after charging and the accumulated can be reset. Now hold OK and reset. What does that mean? You just press this button downwards like that and hold. I don't want to reset, so I'm not going to hold it, but it goes downwards and you can hold it to reset this information. Going to the next page. This is a compass and at, right now there's no dot, but there will be. If you are using the car's onboard navigation, you can toggle between this, uh, the turn by turn uh, directions or the compass. Last page. This gives you how the power is being distributed. You can see uh, whether the front motor is being used or the rear or both. And when you go to the next screen on this page, you see the TPMS tire pressure monitoring system. And that's it. You press again and you, you come back to the first page. 
This is the smart cruise control button, or as I like to call it, the HDA button, because once you press this, all the driver assistance features are enabled and they work together to give you that HDA experience. Now, when you're driving down the highway, you press it once and whatever speed you're at, it will lock your speed at that for the cruise control. Now, if you want to change that, you press and hold this and it will increment in tenths. So if you're doing 100, 110, 120. To, to slow down or decrease the speed, you push it downwards and hold and then it will decrement in tenths, 120, 110, 100. There's no in-betweens. For that, you'll have to do it one at a time. So you can't do 105. You'll have to do this, one, two, three, four, five. Now, to cancel your adaptive cruise control, just push it down once to resume push it again. Press and hold this to set a speed limiter. So let's say you're driving around city doing 60 kilometers an hour. Press and hold this and it will limit your speed at 60. So now it will not let you go over 60 kilometers an hour. So that's a good way of not getting tickets. However, if you floor it, it will overwrite that because that entails an emergency and it will override and let you go over that speed. This right here lets you configure the distance you want to keep between the cars ahead of you. How many car lengths? One, two, three, and four. You can go up to four. This is your lane keep assist. So it will actually keep you centered in the lane. Even if it's disabled, uh, the lane keep assist is still on because it will uh, bring you back in the lane, but you'll have to drift out of the lane first. This won't even let you drift out it will keep you centered. Your speedometer, the state of charge, you can tell auto hold is on, your traffic sign recognition, your gear selector information, we are in P right now because we're parked, the range we have left, 294 kilometers, and then at the bottom right there is your odometer, how many kilometers have you driven so far? And then in the middle right here is your average economy. So it shows that I have been driving at 19.2 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. And then this is your outside temperature, 17 degrees Celsius today. It's a lovely day. The right side of the steering wheel has your media controls. The mode button lets you cycle through your media options such as FM or XM radio or sounds of nature or Bluetooth audio. When you first get the car, it's not configured. So when you press this, it will actually ask you to select the options. This is what happens when you press it. Press it again. Press it again. Press it again. So all your options start coming up here. For each option, you can further cycle through your sub items using this toggle switch. So we just stopped at XM radio. Now, if I use this toggle switch up and down, this will happen. So it will scroll through different channels. If I go back to sounds of nature, I can scroll through different sounds. The button right next to it is for volume, up and down, self-explanatory. Press it down to mute. Press it again to unmute. This button right here is to accept and reject calls using the same button. So if somebody's calling you and you press it, it will accept the call. If somebody is already on the phone with you, you press this and you can hang up. This button is a favorite button and you can select whatever you want within the given options to configure whatever you want. So for instance, you press this and it will cancel route or reroute you or uh, activate and deactivate the privacy mode or do nothing even. So you can actually go through the navigation menu and set this up however you want. The talk button, it can be used for media controls. It can be used for navigation. So you hit this and you say, FM 104.5. Now listening to FM 104.5. And you can do the same thing for satellite radio saying uh, play XM Radio 50, for example, and it will start playing that channel. So that's how you can use your uh, navigation. You can also hit it and say 
find address and then you can input your address so or if you're not sure what to say you can simply say commands and it will give you a list of commands that you can say which brings us to this controversial piece of interior design at first I didn't think it was a big deal but then I started using it and I saw the issues uh, for example while driving Many times I've reached out to this knob just to change the temperature and by accident I've hit either this or this option. Very lightly and it just changes and then you have to go and change it back to like whatever it was. So it definitely is an issue. It's not a deal breaker but it could have been designed better. I did however figure out a few things that would make your life easier. For example, this is for climate control and this is for navigation, but you don't essentially have to tap up. You can just tap this and it will switch between both options. Or you can do the same up here. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to pinpoint uh, navigation or climate. Or even, you don't even have to go here. So for example, you're in the nav menu. You can just come and hit climate control and it will automatically switch there and you can just then turn it down or up however you want to do. Uh, when you're driving alone, obviously it's recommended to put it in driver mode. So it's only heating or cooling you and not the rest of the car because that's a waste of energy. Speaking of, uh, I've noticed that when you are heating, uh, only the left side of the vent is working, this one. But when the AC is running uh, in the driver mode, this, the left one, and the right one, they both run. Uh, also, speaking of AC vents, uh, if you want to turn it off, as in close it, push it away from you. And you hear that click, and it will close that AC vent. The left one as well, push it away from you, and it's closed. Same for the passenger. If they want to close the vent, they can just push it away from themselves and towards you. And as you heard the click, it closed the vent. So this is a neat little uh, piece of information. Not really a trick. It's right here. It tells which way to close, which way to open, but little something in case you didn't know. If you don't want to use the automatic climate control, you can always turn the fan up and down using this when in the navigation and media panel we have all these shortcuts so let's say you are on this screen and you want to launch the map so instead of going to the next screen and then tapping map you could just come here and tap map and it will bring you to the map nav gives you the navigation menu as you can see you have your previous destinations your poi categories home and work if you have already configured it. As you can see, home is configured, so it doesn't have that, that plus icon on it. Work has plus because it's not been configured. Next is this favorite star. So you can configure whatever. I have configured this to launch Android Auto. So when I tap this, it will actually ask me to connect uh, a phone that supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You can easily configure this by going again, another shortcut to set up and then this button option and here you see the custom button for navigation which means this one and the custom button for the steering wheel which is this one they can all be configured for whatever you want as you can see in my case I have selected font projection one more interesting fact about media is that all media controls are individual so you could have your uh, FM radio down to 10 or even on mute and have XM on let's say 30 and your phone at 10 It was pretty surprising for me to note that all these different media selections had their individual volume controls So it's not like if you have one on mute everything will be mute or if you have one at 30 everything will be at 30 No, they all have individual media controls Let's drive Put on the brake Rotate to the right for drive. Let's start in the normal mode. The first thing you will notice is that the car is incredibly quiet. Kia has done a great job of sound deadening. 
which is crucial for electric cars because there's no engine noise to mask wind noise and tire noise which is why a lot of EVs are loud like the cabin is loud and noisy because they don't go the extra mile to make it quiet Kia did it's a great place to be the next thing you'll notice is how compliant the ride is it's a perfect balance of sportiness and comfort which is no easy feat it's sporty without being harsh it soaks bumps like it's nothing I just happened to go over a pothole in the highway which as you know are sometimes unavoidable and I was expecting a jolt and it just went over it like it was nothing I was stunned very very impressed with the ride quality with 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.6 seconds this car has serious performance it is so quick you don't even realize that you're speeding I've started driving it in normal mode now because eco just doesn't do it for me like the car I feel like it just dies and sport is just too quick like way too quick so normal is like a perfect balance and it keeps me safe my kind of ramp I love going down these ramps such planted the steering is so precise here's another one takes corners with such ease it's so much fun going around the banks anybody can make a car that goes fast in a straight line the real test is going around the corners and that's where this car excels this car can take corners and it's so much fun doing so the ride and handling is just fantastic it truly is a driver's car I have a lot of traffic ahead of me which is a perfect opportunity to uh, demonstrate HDA so I'm going to press this button I'm already doing highway speeds in my head of display I see HDA is enabled if you are going over the speed limit you'll actually see an arrow pointing downwards asking you to decrease your speed and if you're going under the posted speed limit it will actually ask you to increase there's a blue line in the head of display that I see right below the car in front of me so the car is telling me that that's the car it is following that car is also shown as a white block in the gauge cluster as you can see in the camera you also see the black blocks around me which are the other cars surrounding me the blind spot information is in three spots as you can see it in the gauge cluster here in the head of display and in the side view mirrors let's do an auto lane change I am going to flick my right turn signal and as you can see the right lane changed into green because it scanned and it thought it was safe to change lanes and it did without any input from me one more thing I've noticed is that if you try to enable HDA around city driving it's not going to enable it will enable all the driver assistance features but HDA itself will not enable and then I figured out why so right under HDA in the head of display I see nav so essentially the car is getting navigation data to determine if the road you're driving on is a highway or not and if it isn't then HDA is not gonna enable so that is something very interesting so now this is again a perfect situation to demonstrate how the car will behave during rush hour traffic so right now we're doing 25 kilometers an hour and as you can see the car is still steering us and it's keeping me centered and it's accelerating and decelerating so this was like a perfect example of how HDA will work doing highway speeds as well as in stopping the traffic if the car in front of you comes to a complete stop this car will come to a complete stop as well but if it starts driving within three seconds 
no action is required on your end and this car will start accelerating but if that car stops for more than three seconds and you do as well consequently then you'll see a message saying that to resume smart cruise control either flick this switch or just tap your accelerator pedal it's not going to resume itself otherwise as you can see we are going around a bend and I took my hands off the steering wheel which you should not do it's not safe this is for demonstration purposes only always keep your hands on the steering wheel like you should anyways as you can see it is not a subtle bend and the car is driving us around it and keeping us centered this system is very very nicely programmed very impressive this car is a looker I've noticed people making videos of this car while I'm driving on the highway I can see like they'll slow down to stay next, next to me or speed up to stay next to me and then start making videos people have come to me when I'm parked somewhere taken pictures ask questions like randomly it has happened so many times this car is a head turner it gets so much attention I truly cannot fault this car for anything I really can't I'm sure over the span of my ownership I will find things that can be improved because nothing is perfect but this is as close as it gets I know this was a long video but look at everything I covered I doubt you'll be able to find a video like this anywhere on the internet I put a lot of time and effort into this so please support the channel if you can please like subscribe and share and thank you for watching